Welcome to lesson 16 of Trading Dimes for Dollars. Today in this video, I'm going to show you a very nifty technique that I use to ship heavy objects inexpensively using flat rate envelopes. In this particular instance, I'm going to show you how to package up 24 pounds of ball peen hammerheads. This pile that I have right here can be shipped for $8 or less in a USPS flat rate envelope. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's a, it's a pretty nifty idea that you'll want to use for things besides ball peen hammerheads, of course. But first, I want to give you a little update. It has been almost two weeks since I've posted a Trading Dimes for Dollars video, and there's a good reason for that. I've been busy with my Planet Whizbang business. You will recall, if you've watched through these videos, that Planet Whizbang is my primary business and selling on eBay is a side hustle. So Planet Whizbang has picked up and I'm extremely busy with that. I will be busy with that through the summer into the fall, but I'm going to try to put out at least one Trading Dimes for Dollars video a week through that busy time. We, my wife and I, have continued to go to estate sales and some uh, yard sales. And uh, I got to say, it's been a little bit discouraging because I haven't yet been to a really good bottom feeder estate sale with a lot of tools and hardware. The kind of sales that I like and that I've managed to go to in past years. But uh, hope springs eternal here. We'll keep going and uh, eventually we'll hit a good sale. But I've got a lot of stuff to sell and I want to show you something before I get before I get to the feature presentation here. I want to show you something that I did find that is mm, pretty neat and it is this red-handled screwdriver. If you watched lesson 14 which was about high dollar screwdrivers you know that uh, red-handled screwdrivers that look exactly like this can be worth hundreds of dollars because they might well be from a vintage Porsche. Porsche. You got to say that right. It's not Porsche. It's Porsche. That's the proper pronunciation. Toolkit. And uh, this looks just like a vintage Porsche toolkit screwdriver. I'm hoping it will be. It it probably isn't, but it sure does look like it. So I got to do a little research on that. That's kind of exciting. Now, I'm going to close up and I'm going to show you this technique that I have. You're going to like this. Yeah. Okay, let me show you, first of all, this a Porsche, this hopeful Porsche toolkit screwdriver right here. You can see that a little better. Hopeful. I'm hopeful, but um, I won't be surprised if I'm wrong about that. Now here are the ball peen hammerheads that I'm going to ship in this flat rate envelope right here. I can ship this using Indicia for eight bucks. You can ship it for a few cents less on eBay. And I've got 24 pounds. It's a couple ounces short, but for all practical purposes, this is 24 pounds of ball peen hammerheads. And there's uh, 20 of them here. And as soon as I do this demonstration, I am uh, going to list these. I've got all my listing photos made and I'm going to list these, but I'm going to prepackage them. And uh, first of all, let's look at how you really shouldn't package them in this. We'll do this real quick. Okay. There. I suppose you could do that. There are probably people who would do that, but I sure wouldn't recommend it. Instead, I recommend that you use a box. And this right here is the perfect box. It fits like the proverbial glove in a padded flat rate envelope, as you are about to see. This is a U-Line 9x6x3. It's S22174. I did the math. Uh, you could buy 25 of these, or at least I can, here in New York, with shipping and tax for $15.93, which is $0.64 cents each. 
for these. Total cost, 64 cents, and it's worth it, as you're about to see. If you're going to ship any kind of a large, or not large, heavy item in a flat rate envelope, padded flat rate. I'm going to show you that 24 pounds, 20 ball, that's a nice one, see that? Ball peen hammerheads will fit in this. If I understand correctly, you can ship up to 70 pounds to a U.S. address in one of these flat rate envelopes, which is astounding. 70 pounds. Oh, oh, there's a big one. I've got to let it work. Yeah, yeah, we're still good. I'm doing this a little faster than I might normally do it. It's a bit like a puzzle, isn't it? Yes, it is. I'll answer that. I know I can get these in there. This is ridiculous. Because I've done it. You just have to do it intelligently. I think I have it. There's actually room for more. Let's see. But these, these hammerheads were picked up at bottom feeder sales, and if I ever buy a ball peen hammerhead individually, I don't spend more than a buck. If it's a oh, look at, I got one more. If it's a uh, really large, particularly nice ball peen hammer, I'll spend a couple bucks. But these are all found using my bottom feeder technique, and uh, so I have, you know less than $24, or less than $20 for 20 ball peen hammerheads here. Let's see if we got it. I think we do. See that? All right, so I'm going to really securely, securely secure this box before I show you how incredibly well it fits. And I like strapping tape in instances like this. Strapping tape is expensive, but it is worth the cost. In this instance, especially. Okay, now, you know what? I think I'm gonna put a little tape right there. I am guilty of overpackaging, I admit it. Or over securing my packaging. But I get good comments about how well things are packaged and I like to get those comments. Now there's one very important thing that needs to be done before this will go in this envelope. The corners, the sharp corners, they need to be bashed. All eight corners need to be bashed, just like that. Okay, this basher is a veneer slick, which is a tool I created, invented, made, sold. I actually still sell them for cabinet refacing, which is something I used to do. And I even wrote a book about cabinet refacing for the Taunton Press, but I digress. Now, I've got this corners bash, well wrapped. Here's the envelope. I grabbed a fresh one instead of that dirty one. And now, this is very important to also need to Make a little slice right there. A vent hole. This is gonna fit in here so tight that a vent hole is needed there. Okay, here we go. I'm 
Now, okay, I'll, I'll show you another technique. You're gonna love this. You can use your knee. You can use your knee. You know what, this box is going into this envelope easier than I'm used to. These are new envelopes I just got from USPS. Maybe they've uh, increased their size ever so slightly. Yeah, I probably didn't even need the vent hole on that. Oh, that's good, that's good. Very good, okay. Now, I'm going to seal it, of course, right here. And it's important with using the flat rate envelope, it's okay to put a box in there, but this has to overlap. Your seal has to overlap, okay? If it doesn't overlap, then you're violating postal regulations. So you want it to overlap, and it does overlap. You can see that, I think. And I want you to notice what I'm doing here. Because this is a this is something that you can use and it will make packaging sometimes a whole lot easier. I have put this into position before removing this strip that's on the adhesive. And that's what I always do. And once it's in position, I can come over here and remove the strip. That is a veneering technique that I used when I refaced cabinets. And that allows you to get where you need to be uh, before removing the tape. Okay, so uh, we've got these ears and I'm gonna uh, deal with these ears, but I'm going to add tape right there. And <clears throat> on these ears, we're going to do this. I always do this with the ears. See that? Hopefully I've got that camera positioned. Oh my goodness, I've got a fingerprint there. My fingers are dirty from picking up those hammers. I hate to get fingerprints on the package. Let's do this one here. I've got a worse fingerprint there. Hmm. Well, I've got a solution to that. We'll get this on here. I suppose if someone buys ball peen hammerheads, they won't be offended by a little grime, grimy fingerprint, but I do hate to do that. Now the way to fix that is uh, just put some of this eBay tape over it. Yeah, maybe two. I hate to send out a dirty package. All right, so I've uh, got that end pretty well secured. You'll see the, the vent hole here, which I probably didn't need. That, I swear these are a little bit bigger, but we'll do this <clears throat> there. Now, uh, remember I told you I was guilty of over packaging? Well, with 24 pounds of ball peen hammerheads in this envelope, I'm going to reinforce this envelope just a little bit more. There we go, one more this way. And then there will be one more thing that I'm going to do to this <clears throat> that I think is important. And I think the US Postal Service will greatly appreciate you, your local post office, especially. All right, we are prepackaged. Now, the next thing is Always, 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 whenever I ship a heavy package like this in any kind of a box or package, I put a heavy label on it. It alerts my postal people, my local post office, that you better be prepared. This one's a heavy one. And those of you who downloaded the PDF ruler page, if you want heavy labels, Go back and check out that PDF. Again, I have added the heavy labels uh, page, printed out on yellow paper like I have here. And get yourself 
scissors or this old one arm paper cutter, which I have used since I was a kid. This was my parents. Um, you can cut them up. I've got these spaced out. I, I could save myself time and go like that, but you got the idea. It's simple to print these out on yellow or goldenrod colored paper, something that gets the attention of the person who's going to pick this up. <laughs> Drop it for effect. And uh, I'm going to put my label here. I am going to put the invoice uh, over here in this envelope. This is prepackaged, so it's going to be a piece of cake to ship when I sell it. And uh, I'm going to get this, uh, maybe I'll end up putting this on the side or something because this isn't very big, but I definitely got to get this heavy label on there like that. And that helps to kind of secure the strapping tape, which may have a tendency to uh, get caught. Here, we'll put that right across like that. Now, if I'm shipping a box that's really heavy, I'll put it on the sides too. And I'll do that here also, because this is a box and it's heavy, so I'll put it right on the sides. And when the postal people see this, they will think, wow, what a nice guy or gal uh, that person is who's shipping that. Okay, so go to the uh, PDF. It's at tradingdinesfordollars.com, and you'll find those uh, heavy, um, these heavy things that you can print. They're, these aren't actually heavy, but they are heavy. Anyway, I'm getting silly. Hey, that's it. That's it. I've showed you how to package as much as you could possibly package in a secure box inside this particular envelope. In a future video, I'll show you the uh, specific Uline boxes that you can use to uh, package heavy things in one of these envelopes or one of these business size envelopes. I have all three. I've got it all figured out and I will share that with you in a future video. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've learned something from it and uh, stay tuned. There will be more.